We are going to need a body to carry us, a mind to carry us, and we are going to need a background of uh, values and things we believe in that are going to be the wall that puts these things together. So that uh, being broken down is uh, basically your mental health, your physical health, and your spirituality, which is your spiritual health. Uh, now, uh, in the context uh, of spirituality, which is where I'm going to start in spiritual health. When we say spiritual health, we do not mean religion. So I don't want anyone to get me wrong because there are people who uh, have different religions in the house. You might have a Muslim, you might have someone who believes in African uh, tradition, and you might have someone who's a Christian. I'm not here to actually endorse or actually highlight any religion that I might or might not believe in, uh, but I'm going to talk about spirituality. So spirituality is an individual rather than a group entity. Religion is more of a group uh, entity, a community of people that come together with common beliefs, common practices and rituals, and usually a religion is attached to a higher power, which is a God, which in the, in the Muslim side would be Allah, uh, or Christians would be God, in African tradition would be Kamata. I don't know other religions, I haven't been exposed as much, I wish to learn more about them. But now when it comes to spirituality, spiritual health basically uh, is a focus of an individual uh, in pursuing meaning in their life. So uh, when we actually uh, look into uh, spirituality, we say, how does one find meaning uh, in their life? To find meaning in your life, you need to uh, actually uh, understand that life is an individual task, it's not a team sport. So everyone is here for a reason. Uh, one might be here to actually contribute uh, meaningfully to the community of Bizana in the area of uh, leadership grooming, which is what this is doing. Unfortunately, not all of you are going to do this. The other one's purpose is going to be to contribute meaningfully in the business space. The other one's business will be to contribute meaningfully in the education space. So each and every one of you has got a special purpose. And if you are not in line with that purpose, nothing is going to go according in your life. For everything to go according, one, you need to actually be uh, clear what your purpose is. And by that, I mean you need to be clear on why you think you are here. And uh, when we go further uh, to, 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 to touch on that, uh, besides your purpose, you need to spend a lot of individual reflective time. So uh, for you and your purpose, you need a lot of time alone to reflect on how you do things and how the things you do affect the goals that you want to achieve. Say your uh, biggest goal right now is actually passing grade 12, which is, uh, it makes you now an academic because the sole purpose is going to be academic. So how do you spend your time? What do you do most of your time? So if most of your time you are not studying, then what you do with most of your time is not in line with your purpose. So uh, by that it means you are not in touch with your spirit. And if you are not in touch with your spirit, it means you are unwell. So that is an imbalanced health state. And uh, going beyond that, uh, now we say how do you actually get to uh, actually improve your spiritual health? Which is how do you get in line with your purpose more and how do you stay in touch with these values that guide you to your goals. Then uh, we say you need to practice uh, what is called meditation, what I highlighted before, uh, which is a state of uh, individual uh, state where you get in touch with your inner self and reflect on the things that you believe in. And two, you need to practice forgiveness, which is now forgiveness is an expression of what you feel in 
inside. So if you are one person that cannot forgive others, then you are in an unhealthy stage. If you bought the emotions and someone has done this to you and you keep it to yourself and all you ever think about is stay that time, then you are in an unhealthy stage. You might be fine physically, you might not need a doctor, but you are in an unhealthy state if you cannot exercise forgiveness. And uh, the last thing that you can do to improve your spiritual health as a young person is to exercise gratitude. Now, exercising gratitude is to be grateful or to appreciate the things that are going well in your life. So when you appreciate those, you don't only appreciate the things that are glittering successes or beautiful things that are actually uh, celebrated by others, you appreciate even the little things like waking up because other people do not wake up from, from their sleep. You appreciate uh, actually being able to get a roof over your head which is provided by your parents. Now, you, if you are grateful for the shelter, it means you do under, understand that life can actually put young people like you in positions where they will not even have a roof over their head. And you be grateful of things like the little your parents can provide for you in terms of your food, in terms of your education, because in as much as you look around and the people that surround you all have these things, but you also need to acknowledge that there are other young people like you that do not have these things that you have. So if you always practice a meditation, forgive others and exercise kindness, and also always show up with an attitude of gratitude, then it means you are spiritually sound in your spiritual way. And spirituality basically is going to be the foundation of everything great for you as a young person. If you are fine in that sense, then it means you can move now to the next phase, which is your mental health. Now, your mental health now is where you actually focus more on your emotional well-being and uh, your psychological well-being and uh, your social well-being. Now, your social well-being is how you interact with others, your peers. So, a healthy state for a young person is a young person who can interact with others, can actually put their message across, uh, feels that their opinions are heard, and also uh, can actually have a presence that is expected for their age, you know? So, you don't uh, come as a 15-year-old and uh, for you to actually put a message across Instead of talking to people, you throw a tantrum like a five-year-old to cry, you want to pull stuff from everyone. So that's not how uh, we actually expect a 15-year-old to be socially relatable to others. So if you are actually a socially well 15-year-old, it means you must interact with others appropriately. Uh, you must behave in a manner that is acceptable for that age. And for that uh, to happen, you need to be in an okay psychological state. So we haven't spoken about any illness here. So all these things, we, we tend to think that one is sick when they need a doctor, but kids who are socially unwell, who do not interact well with others, tend to actually not do well in life and as others. So that's why these things are important, and that's why I think it's important for me to highlight these things for you. So if you actually learn from this age to use platforms like this, to learn to interact well with others, then you are giving yourself a good chance and a head start. Because you are going to need to interact with a lot of people growing up. You are going to need to interact uh, with people at work, with people at church, with people in your community, and if you do not learn good practices now that actually make you to actually relate and be able to interact with others without behaving in a way that is not socially acceptable, and if you do that now, it's going to be easier for the rest of your life. So use this platform to actually gain that. And lastly, your emotional well-being. Your emotional well-being depends on a lot of things. 
So now uh, your emotional well-being basically uh, is how you feel and how you feel it, it actually uh, influences how you act. So now when it comes to how you feel, uh, that is the state of like feeling sad, uh, feeling happy, uh, feeling angry. So all these emotions basically have got things that actually uh, contribute and uh, trigger these different emotions. Now, which emotions are basically uh, socially acceptable? Uh, all these emotions are going to happen within you, but how you deal with these emotions and how they affect your expression basically will show if you are emotionally well or emotionally unwell child, you see? So if you meet people uh, in your school, uh, if you've heard of the kids that uh, if they are actually not okay with anything, the only solution they know is why I'm not shy. And then, yeah, like it's usually me and so you see on social media where one will say, that's why I'm good, and then the response is why I'm not shy. You know? And uh, basically that is now something that we see as a fun scenario, but this is not a fun scenario, this is a representation of kids unwell, a community unwell, fathers unwell, men unwell, mothers unwell. If they think that we need to see a situation where a problem is sorted with violence as a fun situation or something to laugh about. So I want you now, as uh, this generation of young people, to understand that if you've got any situation that triggers emotions of anger, emotions of sadness, now your reaction and how you deal with those emotions uh, is actually going to uh, come from a series of practicing uh, how to handle emotions and how to interact with others. And if when those triggers come, your response is actually violence, your response is disorganized behavior, your response is actually withdrawal, then it means you have not learned how to deal with these emotions in a healthy way. And if you respond negatively to situations, then it means that you are actually unwell. So that is a stage of ill health, but we think that ill health is needing to see a doctor. So another thing that you need to understand from today is that if you are feeling psychologically unwell or you cannot interact with others well, which is you have issues with your social well-being, then you are as unwell as a patient that needs to see a hospital. Now the last part, which basically uh, people will think that uh, basically a doctor is what is going to like to emphasize the importance of is physical well-being. I can see all of you guys here physically well. You look physically well, most of you, as the young people that are here. But now, how do you stay that way? What do you do to stay that way? So, to stay physically well as a young person, you move, you don't stay idle. So, uh, young people need to walk, young people need to stay active, young people need to play sports. How many of you here play sports? Like any sport, guys, any sport. This is not a good reflection. No, that's not play sport. This is not a good reflection at all. Half the models in the room are not playing sport. Who's the season? No, guys, I understand that you exercise a lot for your pitch and gym, but I'm going to tell you one thing now about group sports. Yeah? Uh, now, uh, see this one. This one is, in as much as it allows you to interact with others, now team sports actually gives you, besides the physical uh, abilities and the physical improvements, team sports also uh, teach you how to work in a team scenario. And you go to need that a lot for the rest of your life. There's very few careers that you guys are going to have that are going to put you in a state of working in isolation. And if you cannot work with others or a team to achieve a goal, then it's not going to 
be easy for you to transition from childhood to adulthood. So I'm going to encourage you as young people to involve yourself in whatever sort of sport, you know? And even if you do not do it in a competitive level, but you must do it socially, you know? Uh, in your community, you must take a few minutes to go and play ball. In your community, you must take a few minutes to go for runs, uh, go and play netball, if it's a netball pitch for girls, but you need to be physically active. And the reason we encourage this being physically active is that if you are physically active, you prevent ill health. If you are ill, it doesn't matter what you have in the mind. It doesn't matter what purpose you carry. The problem is that you do not have a body that will carry you long enough to serve that purpose. And the reason I close with this last is because I want to encourage each and one, every one of you to understand that as you grow up as young people, there's going to be a lot of experiments that are going to be hazardous to your physical health. Because your physical health means the health of your organs inside and the health of your organs outside. Now, as young people, as you are growing up, there's going to be ochre pipe that is being smoked by other teenagers. Do you know ochre pipe? Oh, where do you know it from? <laughs> they are saying yes this side. Where do you see ochre pipe? Shop, eh? Yeah? You know it from the shop only. Guys, just be honest. The reason I'm mentioning this thing is that uh, it's not a joke what is written on the packages. When they say smoking is harmful, it is really harmful to your inside. And when they say that drinking or alcohol abuse is actually uh, harmful, it is really harmful, you know? And now all these things that you are going to be exposed to growing up as young people, they will not only expose you directly to uh, things that will lead to ill health physically, they will also expose you to another series of illness, you see? So the reason I'm mentioning this is because as young people, uh, as you grow up, you are in the beauty space, the world sees you as beautiful and beauty is attractive. For the young gentleman, every uh, man in your community is going to want the boy that is uh, regarded as handsome to be part of their team, because when you are part of their team, then you can benefit them because they're going to teach you how to access the resources they cannot access with their face that already has scars. So your young, handsome face is going to be a face of criminal activity, uh, exploiting young girls. So you are the one that is going to bring the girls from school. And not as a deal, is a new dial. I'm just going to bring the other part, you know? And you guys are going to come for the other part, you know? It's the same with young girls. Your beautiful face is going to be exploited by older women that have no reason whatsoever to care about your future. And they are exposed to, to all sorts of things. And when you are exposed to these sorts of things, unfortunately, most of you are going to want to experiment because everyone is experimenting. But now, if you are in the space where you are taught to live a life that has purpose and meaning, and you are taught to actually uh, be beneficial to your community, you are going to start developing all these dreams and having all these big projects and accessing all these good resources. And when your life is starting uh, to actually hit a, a good pace and things are happening for you, your body is going to let you down. Because now if you start exposing yourself to these dangers, then things are starting to happen for you. You are starting to achieve these goals, but you have not taken care of your body. You have taken all these things that you are told not to take. And then you have exposed, exposed yourself to all these illnesses that you were supposed not to expose yourself to. Then the next thing, you are a young man who is HIV positive, who is coughing non-stop, that the neighbor can even wake up when they cough in the morning. You know, because the hookah pipe has damaged the lungs, TV is also doing its thing there, and the energy is gone, and then everyone knows in your community you had this passion of actually empowering young boys, 
through action, through fixing the community, through helping elderly women. But the problem is that now your body is not a reflection of a young elderly person. So that's why I'm touching on this last to say that everything you do now, every experiment that you are going to want to go get into, you should always ask yourself, is this in line with my purpose? Is this going to allow this body to carry me long enough to be able to achieve all these dreams? Because all these dreams are within arms reach. It's a zero to one situation, as I said in the beginning. But for these zero to one situations to remain zero to ones, you need the mind to be there. You need the heart to actually guide you towards your purpose. But you need a body to carry you. So if any of these three pillars is limping, doesn't matter how good you are in the mind, but with no body, you are not going to reach the schools. Doesn't matter how strong your body is, if you need to lift the heaviest weight in the gym, but without a good heart, you are not going to serve all these dreams. So if I am going to leave you with any words and say, if you are going to be in any good health, it should be good health in the mind, it should be hearts with a lot of purpose, a lot of kindness, and a lot of gratitude that you express towards others. And it should be a good health that actually involves you taking care of not only your bodies, but those around you. And if you understand that about health, then it means I didn't leave you with tablets and injections today. I left you with a good message to say that those you care about should also understand that they are not going to be unwell only when they need to see the doctor. Even a state of not showing love to others is a state of being unwell. Even a state of not being able to forgive others when they do you wrong is a state of being unwell. Even a state of living a life without any meaning or purpose is a state of being unwell. Before I step down, I'd like you to give you now with one uh, message, which is a quote from uh, one of the elite athletes of our time, uh, Mr. Elliot Kipchoge. He says that uh, to quote his words, only the disciplined are free in life. If you are not disciplined, you are a slave to your moods and you are a slave to your passions. So if you are disciplined, then it means you do what has to be done, when it has to be done, regardless of how you feel. But the problem with the lack of discipline is that if your mood, because if you lack discipline thereof, you'll be a slave for the rest of your life, a slave to your mood, a slave to your passions, and you'll always be second best to those who are disciplined. Thank you.